uh, the the electrical potential and how to use the electrical potential to uh, do the calculation. If you know the potential, how to calculate the field, and if you know the field, how to calculate the potential. So this is the first topic I'm going to talk about today. And then I will spend a couple of minutes talking about the uh, magnetic field and then how to use the uh, magnetic field equation to calculate the, uh, the magnitude and direction of magnetic, uh, magnetic fields generated by a moving charge. Uh, then we will start, we will end this class by uh, quiz. Um, so first one, uh, this is a uh, machine physics problem due last night, and you will see um, there are uh, electro potential lines. I show you here electro potential line, and we have um, negative 20, so not, not negative 20, negative 200. Um, we have negative 200. And positive two hundred and zero, and and you can see these uh, three lines are parallel. If they are parallel and they have the same uh, spacing, you can see from uh, minus two hundred to zero, uh, the spacing is one centimeter, and from zero to two hundred, uh, the spacing is uh, also one centimeter. That means the gradient of the potential. The gradient of potential is uniform. Uniform in this region. This region. And we know uh, if we know the gradient of the potential, we can go back to calculate the electric field. The electric field is the gradient of the potential, and we have a minus sign in front. This is an electric field. And if the gradient of the potential is uniform, that means the magnetic field, or the, the electric field, is a constant. A constant value. So in this case, we can use a simplified equation, electric field equal to the change of uh, the change of potential over the distance. The distance. Okay. So uh, the distance uh, between um, the three lines, we can use minus two hundred volt to two hundred volt. Then we will have and two hundred volt minus minus two hundred volt. This is the change of the potential then divide by the distance. The distance between these two voltage, these two potential lines are two centimeter. Okay, so we will have um, 200 plus 200 to 400 over two centimeter, we convert it into meter, then we will have 220,000 volt per meter. This is the magnitude of the electric field. Then, what's the direction of the electric field? From this relation, this one, we know the direction of the electric field is minus of the gradient. So let's check what's the direction of the gradient. The gradient has a direction, direction from low potential to a high potential. So from low potential to high potential, um, the direction is low potential to high potential here. This is a direction of the gradient voltage. And if we take the minus, then the direction goes to opposite. And so we have minus gradient in this way. So this is minus gradient V. So the electric field is parallel uh, to the minus gradient of potential. 
So this is a direction of electric field. And you can find that the electric field point from the high potential to the low potential. And right here, the so electric field, the direction of the electric field of E is from high potential to low potential. Okay, this is very important. So if we have a positive charge in the center and um, the potential from the center to the outside, if this is R, from the center to the outside, the potential goes down. Suppose this is 100 volt, this is 50 volt, this is zero volt, okay? Then uh, the electric field is go to outside from high potential to low potential. If there is a negative charge from the center to the outside and the electric potential goes down from minus 100 volt to minus 50 volt to zero and from high, poten uh, high potential to low potential is from outside to the inside. So the electric field goes inside. So that's the difference. Okay, then let's go back to this question. Uh, what's the direction? And if we take the, the diagram and you find that the direction of electric field going this way and we know the positive x direction is in this way. So there is a 135 degree and clockwise from the x axis. Okay. So we choose this one. Um, so I think the, the tricky thing is uh, the electric field equal to minus, let me use another color, minus, it's very important, minus gradient of potential. So the minus sign is very important. That tells us electric field uh, point from the high um, potential to the low potential. Okay, this is uh, uh, this question. So do you have any question? Yeah, um, so if this wasn't like a uniform electric potential thing, would mm -hmm. you like the partial derivative of um, the, the potential in order to find the electric field components? That will be like this. Okay. So if this is not uniform, we can use E equal to minus uh, change of the potential over change distance. This is only applied for uniform uh, electric field. So if the uh, electric field is not uniform, we have to do the derivative in three direction, then we sum up each direction's uh, potential component and make sure this is just a number. This is not a vector. Uh, so if this is a number, but the electric field is a vector, so how do we do, how do we convert the number into a vector? This is an electric field in the x component. So we multiply a little i hat. This is a unit vector of the electric field. And this one multiply the little j. This one multiply by a little k. i, j, k, a uh, uh, unit vector in x direction, y direction, and the z direction, respectively. Okay. Okay, thank you. So let's move on to the magnetic field. Okay, mm. so the magnetic field, let's start with the compass. The magnetic compass is a very uh, useful thing to determine the direction 
um, actually, uh, you will find that the, the, the campus um, is always uh, here is a magnet. The magnet in the center. Yeah, let me write here. Uh, the magnet. Oh, so this is a magnet. This magnet has a north pole and a south pole, and the this point tell you which direction is north, which one is south. So long long ago, when the European people found the North American mainland, they need um to go a long distance and travel from the Europe to the North American. But if they take the wrong direction and they just uh, take a wrong direction at the beginning, then they will uh, make a mistake at the end. So the direction is very important. So how do they get the direction? I think um, this is the first uh, invention and to get the direction. And the people find that the magnet and is always point to the north or the south, no matter where you are. So uh, when people have the campus, they know which direction is north, then they can find the new position and don't miss the, the road. And the reason why the campus work, uh, because the, the earth is a big uh, rocket, magnet rocket. So you can think about that. This is a, uh, the earth is a rock. This earth is a very big um, magnet and this magnet generates a magnetic field. And if you put a small magnet on the earth, this two magnet is going to align. So eventually um, the magnet, the small magnet is going to align and north to the north, south to the south. So this is the reason why people can use compact or the magnet to uh, determine the direction. But you might have questions why the Earth has a magnetic field. Magnetic field. So uh, we have to go inside the structure of the Earth. This question uh, confused the scientists for a long time and until people know the inner structure of the Earth. The Earth is not a solid. It's made by the liquid. If you go to inside of the Earth, this is a magma of the Earth, the structure of the Earth. And you find that in the center, from outside to the center, let me use another color. Uh, from outside to the center, uh, the temperature goes higher and higher. And the temperature is too high, so every solid just get melt. And when they get melt, and the, the molecules, item just uh, uh, deionize, so this liquid carries a lot of charge, positive charge, negative charge. But um, the experiment confirmed that the net charge of the Earth is negative. So that means uh, the Earth carry more negative charge than the positive charge. The Earth is not neutral. And we also know the Earth is spinning. If the Earth spinning, this liquid has a constant flow at a constant direction. So if the charge move, the charge move, it's going to, it's going to generate a magnetic field. Magnetic field, I use capital B to represent magnetic field. Okay, so um, the reason is if you have charge, then the charge moves, then the moving charge is going to generate a magnetic field around this charge. And you might uh, notice the aurora. And this is uh, a picture uh, take on the um, on North Pole, near the North Pole. And they find that um, the aurora usually happens at the North Pole or the South Pole of the Earth. Because at the pole, of the Earth, the magnetic field is very strong, as stronger than the uh, equator or other place on the Earth. Then uh, the universe has a lot of charged particles. These particles carry very high energy and move very fast. When these particles collide 
with the atmosphere, then they generate a lot of light because when the light uh, it generates heat and the heat go to uh, ignite the earth and ignite the, the air and the atmosphere, then generate a lot of light. So because of the magnetic field on Earth, the living things on the Earth is protected by the magnetic field. Then when the charged particles hit the Earth and the magnetic field is going to protect uh, the living things from the uh, attacking by the particles and it's like a, a shell, this shell protects the Earth. So when we know the magnetic field is generated by a moving charge. The next question is, if we have a moving charge, we know the value of charge, we know the speed of charge, can we calculate uh, the magnitudes of magnetic field? So um, the rest of this class, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the equation. How do we use um, a moving charge to calculate the magnetic field it generates. Okay. Suppose we have a positive charge, a positive charge and moving with a constant speed. There's a speed. And we want to know the magnetic field generate at the position near this charge. Suppose we're going to uh, measure the magnetic fields at the point P. And we know this charge has a distance to the P, that's R. The R has a direction from the charge to the point P. Okay, then um, from the experiment, people know that the magnetic field magnitude is proportional to the value of the charge. Also, it's proportional to the speed of the moving charge. Okay, and what else? If the distance from the point P to the charge gets further, then the magnetic field goes down. And the relation is one over R squared. Okay, so one over R squared is a magic number, so, uh, minus two, because we know the electric field generated by the charge is also one over R squared. So, R squared, one over R squared is a magic uh, number here. And if we combine these two relations, we have magnetic field proportional to the charge, velocity, and one over R squared. Okay, but the magnetic field has direction. So what's the direction of the magnetic field? Then let's go back to the, the figure. Here, um, I show you a figure here. If we have current, uh, the current actually is a moving charge. So we have positive charge moving in this direction. So that means if uh, the positive charge moving upward, it's going to generate a magnetic field. And the magnetic field is like a vortex and it goes in this way, goes in counterclockwise. So the magnetic field is a circle. But we know um, if we have the velocity goes up, the velocity goes up, and the distance is from uh, the position or any position uh, on this cable, we connect with the point we're going to study it doesn't give us a direction um, like a circle in the plan. So how do we um, notify or use a direction um, to note the direction of the plan of the B? So we use cross product. Go back here. So we use um, this one, V, and the speed of the V or the velocity cross a univector of the distance. So a univector of distance is from, uh, let's see, 
if we know the R is from here to here, this is R, and the union vector of R is equal to the R, the vector, divided by uh, the magnitude of itself. That's a unit vector. So if we have a speed of V, we have a unit vector of R, then the cross product is going to give us a new vector. This vector is the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so if we have this formula, we need to convert this into an equation. So we use B equal to a constant. A constant here is mu naught over 4 pi. This is a constant. This multiply by a Q velocity cross a unit vector over R squared. Okay. And the mu naught over 4 pi is a constant. So you can go back to, uh, to, to review the electric field. We know this is equal to the 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Or you can use a k okay, times uh, the charge in the center um, over the R square. And uh, the direction of electric fields is in the radial direction. So we can use a unit vector of R to represent the direction. So if you compare these two equation, you find they are similar and they have a constant, they have a Q times R unit vector over R square. So there is Q R R square, Q over R square and the R unit vector. The difference is magnetic field is generated by a moving charge. So we have a speed here. The speed gives us a value uh, in the magnetic field, but electric field, we don't need a moving charge. So a charge is going to generate electric field, but a moving charge will generate both electric field and magnetic field. Okay, one more thing. The unit of the vector, uh, the unit of magnetic field, the unit of magnetic field is Tesla, a famous name. Okay, uh, we don't give the credit to uh, Elon Musk, uh, we just give the credit to the Tesla. Tesla is an engineer and he founded a company, and this company uh, used the uh, AC current, the alternating current um, uh, for the uh, utility, and he is a very famous engineer at that time, and so we give the credit uh, to him. We use uh, his name to uh, name the unit of the magnetic field. And let's go back to the equation. The magnetic field is equal to the mu naught for pi and charge velocity cross and unit vector of distance over distance square. Okay, then if we have this equation, we can go back to calculate the magnetic field generated by a moving charge. So the, on the modern physics, we have a question number four, and it's a question about magnetic field generated by a moving charge. So here you see um, we have a charge, a proton. Proton is carry, it's a carrying positive charge. And the proton, we know the E of proton, the charge, charge of proton is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Krun. You can find this value on the equation sheet. Okay, And uh, another thing is the moving speed V is two times 10 to the seven meter per second. And we want to calculate the magnetic field at the point P, this point. 
Okay, so we need to know the distance from point P to the proton. Okay, the distance is square root two centimeter. Okay, this is not difficult. R equal to R square root two centimeter. Then let's use the equation magnetic field equal to mu naught over four pi times Q B cross R over R square. Okay, the mu naught over four pi, you can find this value on the equation sheet. Mu naught over four pi is equivalent to 10 to negative seven. Okay, and the charge, you know, is this one, this is a Q. And you know the value of V, you know the value of R, but the cross product is not equal to, not equal to uh, two times 10 to the seven times square root two. This is not correct. So be careful. When you see the cross product, it's not equivalent to the multiplication of the magnitude of these two vectors. The cross product is going to give you a, a new vector. And this new vector has both magnitude and direction. So we have to determine um, the direction and the magnitude of the cross product. So how do we calculate the cross product? Here, if we have a vector A, and we have a vector B, and they have angle in between. Then the cross product is defined as A cross B. The magnitude of the cross product is called cross product. Magnitude is equal to the magnitude of A, magnitude of the B, we multiply them together times the sine theta. The angle is from the vector A to vector B. So this is a theta. And the theta is smaller than uh, 180 degree and larger than zero degree. So the theta is a small angle, not this angle. So not this, not this, but this. Okay, so this is the magnitude. And if you do some math, you can confirm the magnitude of the cross product is the area of this parallelogram. So we know uh, the, the length of size A, we know the length of size B, and we multiply uh, the angle sine theta in between. So this one is area of the parallelogram made by A and B. Okay, then when we know the magnitudes of the cross product, the next thing is what's the direction of A cross B? The A cross B is a new vector. This new vector is perpendicular to the vector A and also perpendicular to vector B. So that means the new vector is perpendicular to the surface made by A and B. So if my pad is a surface made by A and B, then the vector, new, uh, the cross product is going to perpendicular to the, the surface of my iPad. Then uh, we have two options. Um, does the cross product give you a direction goes inward or outward? So inward or outward. So it's going to toward me or outward me. So I show you how to determine the 
uh, vector A and vector B and also the cross product. And we use the right hand row. Right hand row to determine the direction of A cross B. Then stop the theory and tell you how to use this one to do the calculation. And we have uh, vector A and vector B. And we want to uh, know what's the direction of A cross B. So the A and the B are in the plan of this paper. So the new product has two options. One is goes outward in this way towards you, and another direction is goes inward towards me. So which direction is the right direction? So we use right hand, we start with vector A, and I curl my four fingers to vector B, then the direction of my thumb is the direction of A cross B. So my thumb towards me. So the direction of A cross B is inward inside of the paper. And if I want to know the vector B cross vector A, we start from vector B, then I curl to the vector A clockwise, then my thumb goes towards you. So um, the direction of A cross B is outside, outward in this direction. Okay, so that means the A cross B is not equal to B plus A. Go back here. Uh, okay, let me go back here. A cross B is not equal to B cross A. The magnitude is the same, but the direction are interparallel. So this is equal to B cross A. It's very important. So um, which one is in front determined by the direction? Okay, so if you go back um, to the uh, coordinate, I know vector A has uh, three components, X, Y, Z. This is three components of vector A cross vector B also three components, then we will get um, the cross product in this formula. So that will be um, to get the vector and the new vector and each component. The easy thing is for the X component, we erase X component, then we write down the determinant made by A2, B2, A3, and B3. So the A2, B2, A3, B3, according to the linear uh, algebra, this is equal to A2, B3 minus B2, A3. So the X component is equal to the A2, B3 minus A3, B2. The same thing to calculate the Y component, we erase the Y component, then we have X component and the Z component, and we also write down the determinant made by A3, B3, A1, B1, that will be B1, A3, minus A1, B3. For the Z component, we erase the Z component, we have A1, B1, A2, B2, the determinant is A1, B2, minus a2, b1. Okay, this is the coordinate of the cross product. Okay, then let's go back to mainstream physics to calculate the vector. And we know um, we want to calculate um, the velocity cross the r hat. Okay, the velocity is a vector and there is only x component. That will be the two times 10 to the seven meter per second. Y component and z component are zero. So that's right here. And r 
is a vector, univector from here to here. Goes in this way. And the angle from the R to the X, um, positive X is theta. This is 135 degree. So the R is cosine 135 degree, sine 135 degree zero. So that will be the minus one over square root two, one over square root two, zero. This is a unit vector of the R. Okay, then let's do the calculation of the cross product. And we erase the first component. Then we have zero times zero, zero minus times one over square root two, that's zero. So this is equal to zero. This is the x component. For the y component, we erase this line, and we have this guy times zero minus this guy times zero. So that's zero. And for the z component, we erase this guy. We have two times 10 to the seven times one over square root two, then minus zero. Okay, so the cross product give us a vector. This vector only has z component. That will be square root two times seven. Okay, this is a v cross r. And the magnetic field is equal to uh, mu nung over four pi times the charge over r square. Right, so this uh, uh, scalar, so we just need to multiply the value. Mu nung over four pi is 10 to the negative seven, and the charge is 1.6, 10 to the negative 19, and the, over the r square, r square is square root two, that's a two centimeter square. Okay, and the magnetic field has zero x component, zero y component, and z component is this multiplication. Okay, so do you have any question? Yes, possibly. Um, why was that not negative? Not negative? Oh, oh yeah, you're right. The velocity is negative. Good, good point. Okay. So this is negative. What else? Do we have to change from centimeter to meters, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Let me see. Oh, there's a question from chat. Uh, R increases potential decrease. Yeah, so uh, the if the distance increase, then the potential, uh, hold on. Uh, there's no relation between the R and the potential. So the potential actually in the just now, we talk about the potential. Let's go back to this one. And at this position, uh, the potential has a gradient, but it doesn't say the potential has a relation with R. So the electric field actually is the gradient of potential, and there's nothing to do with the distance. Okay, the distance is just a distribution and it doesn't guarantee the R increase or the potential decrease. Okay, so if you have no question, let's go back to the quiz. And let me uh, open the quiz for you. So you can, you can go back to the uh, course site and under the section, our section, you will see a Q3A. The Q3A um, is, uh, is a quiz, and please upload uh, the, the quiz on the, uh, on the section, let me see. Oh, the section is, uh, is above my section. You will see uh, upload your section for today's quiz, and there is a quiz three you upload your quiz as a quiz three. Okay, so, and I'm ready for answer any question, and if you have any. If you finish, and uh, you're good to go. Okay. 